I was 19 years old, driving home from my then boyfriend's house, late at night. It was around 2 in the morning and the town was fading into the distance behind me. In front of me there were vast cornfields and shelter belts, which made the surroundings feel desolate at that hour. As I pulled up to a red light on the very edge of town, I was the only one there. The car idled and I was lost in my thoughts when something caught my eye in the periphery of my vision. My first thought was that it was probably a deer. It wasn't uncommon to spot them around here. But curiosity got the best of me, and I turned my head to see what had moved. My heart plummeted as I locked eyes with a man. He looked to be in his fifties and was creeping toward my car. The dim glow from the city lights behind me cast eerie shadows across his face. I was frozen in fear for a moment, taking in the situation. That's when I noticed he was clutching a tire iron in his hand. Our eyes met, and time seemed to stand still. The man's intent was unmistakable, and it sent a shiver down my spine. He froze as well as if caught in the act. The tension in the air was palpable, and I felt my heart racing. In that split second, I knew I had to act. Without hesitation, I slammed my foot on the gas pedal, running the red light. The tires squealed and the car shot forward. My pulse thundered in my ears as I sped away from the intersection, leaving the man with the tire iron behind. I didn't dare look in the rearview mirror to see if he was following me. All I knew was that I needed to get as far away from there as possible. I drove as fast as I could, my heart pounding with every mile that separated me from that terrifying encounter. I finally made it home, my hands still trembling as I pulled into the driveway. I bolted from the car and practically ran to the safety of my house. I locked the doors and peered through the blinds, but there was no sign of the man who had appeared out of nowhere. I didn't sleep much that night. The image of his face and that tire iron etched in my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had settled over me. What had he intended to do? Why was he lurking in the middle of the night on a deserted road with a weapon? In the following days, I couldn't help but replay the incident over and over in my mind. I never reported it to the police, perhaps out of fear or simply because I had escaped unscathed. But that encounter left me with a newfound sense of vulnerability. It served as a stark reminder that danger could lurk in the most unexpected places, even on the lonely roads in the middle of nowhere. I never drove that route at night again. It was a small price to pay for my safety and peace of mind. The memory of that night has stayed with me, and I'll never forget the chilling moment when I locked eyes with a stranger in the dark, with a tire iron in his hand and who knows what on his mind. It was a lesson learned the hard way, and I count myself lucky to have escaped unharmed. Over the weeks that followed, I found myself often reflecting on that night, unable to shake the feeling of unease. Who was that man, and why did he appear out of the darkness with such menacing intent? It was a question that nagged at me, and I couldn't help but wonder if he had targeted me, or if I had merely been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Alright folks, I hope you're all still with us because what we're about to uncover will have you wondering if what you see is real. But before we continue, if you've been enjoying the journey into the unknown, please do us a favor and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on more terrifying tales. Now let's dive back into the horror that awaits. When I was about 19, I had a late night shift that ended around 11 p.m. After a long day at work, I was eager to get home, and there's something eerie about driving on a deserted two-lane road at that hour. It's the kind of road where the surrounding trees and fields loom close, casting long shadows that seem to reach out for your car. As I drove in the dim glow of my headlights, I saw no other cars on the road. It felt like I was the only person left in the world, and the silence was deafening. The only sound was the soft hum of my engine and the occasional rustle of leaves in the breeze. And then it happened, just when I thought I couldn't get any more creeped out. Out of nowhere, a guy in a red shirt on a bicycle swerved from the side of the road right in front of my car. My heart leaped into my throat as I slammed on the brakes, but it was too late. I hit him, felt the impact, and my world turned upside down. I was in a state of shock, yelling, oh my god, repeatedly as I stopped my car and got out to see how badly I had hurt the man. But when I looked around, he was nowhere to be seen. No bike, no red-shirted guy, no dent or blood on my car. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. I grabbed my flashlight and scoured the area, searching the ditch and nearby fields for any sign of a body. My heart raced as I called out, hoping for a response, but the only answer was the echo of my own voice in the still night. 
A few passing cars witnessed my frantic search, their occupants casting worried glances my way. As I was combing the field, a sheriff's car pulled up and I recounted the bizarre incident to the deputy. He listened patiently and then told me something that echoes in my head to this day. He said that I hadn't hit anyone. Instead, I had encountered the ghost of a young man who had died under eerily similar circumstances right there. The young man had been wearing a red shirt and was riding his bike when he was struck by a car, losing his life instantly. The deputy informed me that every few years, someone driving through that area experiences a similar encounter, believing they've hit a red-shirted bike rider. The young man's spirit seemed forever trapped in a haunting cycle, repeating his final moments on that desolate road. I was left in disbelief, shaken to the core. The deputy assured me that I wasn't the first to have this encounter, and I wouldn't be the last. The area had a history of strange and unexplained events, and while I hadn't hit a living person, I had witnessed something truly chilling. The encounter with the bicyclist haunted me for a long time. It's a story I often share with friends and family, but no one can truly understand the inexplicable fear and confusion that came over me that night. To this day, I am convinced that I had hit a ghost, and it's a memory that continues to haunt my memory whenever I recall that lonely, dark drive down the two-lane road. Back in the 80s, we took a road trip from Morelia to Ciudad Hidalgo, Mexico. To reach Ciudad Hidalgo, we had two options, the National Road, or the old one known as Mil Cumbres, which translates to 1,000 curves. As you might guess, Mil Cumbres was named so because it had an incredible number of twists and turns. It was not for the faint of heart, and many people got motion sickness from all those curves. On one evening, as we were returning to my grandparents' house in Ciudad Hidalgo, my grandfather was behind the wheel. He had a real fondness for Mil Cumbres, not only because of its stunning views, but also because he simply loved driving along that road. However, with the introduction of the new national road, fewer people chose the old one. It had become quite desolate, except for the occasional passing through a small town. As dusk settled in, we knew that being on this deserted mountain road would soon mean complete darkness, with few other cars sharing this stretch of road. The drive usually took about two hours, and about 45 minutes into the journey it was already getting very dark. Sitting in the back seat, I leaned over the front chairs to see why my grandfather had started to slow down. What I saw made my heart race. There was a massive tree log blocking the road ahead. My grandfather came to a stop and without a second thought, he began to reverse the car to turn it around and get us out of there. As we were making a quick U-turn, I was thrust back into the rear seat. My heart pounded in my chest as I looked back to see if I could discern anything. As we sped away, I saw figures emerging from the adjacent trees near the tree log on the road. They carried flashlights and what appeared to be guns. The dim light from the car's taillights made it hard to see them clearly, but I could tell they were coming our way. It suddenly hit me. We were about to be robbed. Thanks to my grandfather's swift thinking and immediate action, we narrowly avoided what could have been a terrifying encounter. It was a close call, but we managed to escape without harm. After that night, I never set foot on that road again. Well, it's been one heck of a ride, hasn't it? If you've enjoyed this video and the true horror stories we've shared, make sure to explore more of our horror stories. We've got a whole archive of terrifying first-person accounts waiting for you. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and delve deeper into the abyss of terror with us. And for those brave souls who've stuck around, you've got our utmost gratitude. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Until next time, stay scared and stay curious.